Hi, good morning and welcome back to the Keys History and Discovery Center. I'm curator Brad Bertelli and we are uh, launching, sort of launching our new program called Discover History, which will be our Tuesday morning uh, contribution to our, our uh, members and our community and those who want to learn a little bit more about the great history of the Florida Keys. I want to start off by thanking Gail Butters for my wonderful new shirt. Uh, she sent me a a surprise shirt in the mail and it fits great and I want to say thank you so much to Gail and the rest of the Butters family for your continued support and for acknowledging my obvious affection for the Florida skunk ape and Bigfoot in general. And uh, so it's a great shirt, thank you so much. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, the Overseas Highway, uh, a little bit of the, the history, the, the, how it began, and go through many of its, of its first incarnations. If you do have questions, Erin is manning the, uh, manning the Facebook page so she can let me know um, if, you, if you want to type in a question. Otherwise, I will get back to answer the question at the, uh, later in the day when I get back to my desk. So one of the big um, mysteries, not mysteries, but misconceptions of the Overseas Highway is that prior to, um, you know, prior to uh, the Labor Day hurricane in 1935, that the train was the only uh, conduit to get, you know, to get from the mainland, from Florida City or from Miami down to Key West. Uh, which is which is not ac which is not accurate. Um, the, the the whole idea of a road through the Florida Keys and a road to Key West was actually first brought up in 1895. Um, it obviously didn't go far then, um, but then you know slowly uh, after the turn of the century, around 1908, a lot of the farmers in the Upper Keys were looking for a better road system in order to get their produce from the fields to you know, to the uh, to the railroad line and, and to the to the depots where the trains would stop, and so they partitioned the or petitioned the the, uh, the county to create more roadworks. And in 1908, there were some roads, some roadworks that were created in in the upper keys and the lower keys, kind of up and down. Um, but by about in, in 1919, the Miami Motor Club also began to lobby for uh, a, a more solid road, uh, a more solid uh, road system to the Keys because they wanted to offer their their members a suburban fishing ground here in the Florida Keys. Um, and you know, the one thing the Keys have been known for and always been known for uh, is, is its is fabulous fishing. Now the first. Um, the first real beginning of, of an actual road to the Florida Keys started to develop about 1922, uh, 1922 when there was um, some money set aside for the creation of some roads. The first road <clears throat> uh, reached from what was the Anglers Club in North Key Largo down to the train depot uh, at a, in, in Key Largo about mile marker 106. And then um, over the over a course of several years, more roads began to to you know, be created, including a road from uh, from Little Card Point, which is on the Dade County sign, which is kind of at the end there where Alabama Jacks is, and that Card Sound Bridge Road, which was originally built as a swing bridge, so it was it was manned by a a, a a bridge tender, and when a boat would come, he'd have to go out there and crank that bridge open, and it would it would open so boats would be able to pass pass through. Um, now that uh, that that early that early road system, uh, the bridge uh, opened. The Card Sound Bridge opened in 1926, early 1926. Unfortunately, the 1926 Miami hurricane washed that bridge system out, and it was rebuilt. But it was built about eight feet higher to accommodate uh, more flash flooding. And to just kind of go back to a Butters, I, uh, since since we're on a Butters kick now, with my fancy new shirt. Um, it was after the bridge was rebuilt in 1926, according to. November 11th, 1926, was when it opened. That was when the Butters first first uh, were able to come explore uh, Key Largo, and that was when uh, the, the you know, people were able to drive for the first time from from the mainland and explore Key Largo f for fishing. And of course, from that, at that point, the Butters fell in love with uh, with Key Largo and and. and 
to develop their own fishing camp or their own you know, their hotel. They had you know a, a, a dock. Um, if you want to learn more about that story, which is fantastic, please visit our YouTube channel. I did a lecture on the whole uh, butter story uh, that, that's available there for, for you to view. Now, the first incarnation of the Overseas uh, Highway, which was originally called State Road 4A, uh, and that followed the Card Sound, road, uh, Card Sound route um, down to Key Largo. Uh, that opened to traffic really in 1927. It was officially celebrated in 1928. And at that point, in 1928, you were able to drive from Miami all the way to Key West. It wasn't you know, a complete road system, it wasn't a perfect road system, but it was, you were able to get in a car in Miami and then step out of your car in Key West. The big difference between this first incarnation of the Overseas Highway was that um, there was a 40 mile gap in it. So you were able to drive um, over, over solid bridge systems from the mainland to Lower Matacumbi. And at Lower Matacumbi, you would board a, uh, an automobile ferry. And over the back, back of my head there on the wall, you can see a picture of one of the automobile ferries as well as the, uh, the Lower Matacumbi uh, ferry terminal. Now at the ferry terminal, you would, you would uh, uh, drive your car on, onto the boat, onto, on, onto the automobile ferry, and it would take you to No Name Key, where at that point it was able, you were able to disembark and then drive all the way down back to, uh, down to, uh, to Key West and finish your trek. That was not at all the same road that we travel today. Uh, that road actually uh, traveled across Big Pine Key and ended up on on uh, on the, the on Little Torch and Big Torch and ended up, you know, going down the, the down the kind of the uh, coast on, on Sugarloaf and then through uh, um, um, well, actually, we'll, we'll look at that a little later. But it, it was a, a very different road. Um, interestingly, some of the uh, early uh, settlers, you know. The, the people who lived here also referred to the road as Old Bumpy, because it was not, you know, full of asphalt. It was it was a, basically a dirt road with, with lots of bumps. And I know uh, Suze Fowler, who uh, he, her and her husband operated um, the property that was uh, uh, Fowler's uh, Caribbean Colony, which was where Papa Joe's would, would be later at, at Upper Matacumbi Key, across from uh, what is today Bud and Mary's uh, Marina. I referred to the, the road as Old Bumpy because she said, for every mile you went north north or south, you would also go a half mile you know, up, up and down. Um, but that's, um, that this first road uh, so you, required the use of, of an automobile ferry. It wasn't super reliable. It was four hours. It took four hours to go from, from point A to point B. Um, the, the ferry ran twice a day. It would depart at 9 o'clock in the morning and then again at 1, one o'clock in the afternoon. But it wasn't super reliable. If there were high winds, if there were low tides, sometimes the ferry would get stuck. And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a perfect system, but it was a system. Yes, we have a question coming in. How many ferries served the route? There were four ferries that were, that were built for, 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 the, um, the, for the system. Uh, the Monroe County, the Key West, I can't think of the uh, name of the other two. Uh, the, the Florida Keys, the Monroe Count, no, the Florida Keys, uh, the Key West, I can't remember the other two. But two would operate at, at, at one time. So as one departed at, at nine o'clock in the morning at, um, at a, um, Laura Matacumbi would be down, would also, the, the one down at, at, at um, No Name Key would also depart, so it would be going both ways. Um, now, about 1931, 1932, they added two more, two additional ferry terminals to kind of shorten the road. So this, started, this began to incorporate the middle keys. There was one ferry, uh, one ferry terminal that was built on a grassy key, and then another on, uh, on hog key, which is kind of attached to, uh, to vodka key in the, the marathon area, and then a road that would connect the two. Um, but by 19, um, 1934, 1932, 1934, of course, the Great Depression is in full swing. Um, Monroe County has declared bankruptcy. Uh, day, uh, uh, Florida has declared bankruptcy. Flagler's Railroad was not operating. That was, that was on its way to declaring bankruptcy as well. Um, but what they wanted to do was create a solid bridge system. That would, that would eliminate this need for an uh, automobile ferry. 
and, and, and because it wasn't, because the, the road wasn't bringing the traffic down to Key West that they, they hoped it would. Um, they had, at this point, they had um, begun to clean up Key West to create hotels, you know, um, clean, you know, plant gardens, paint the houses, clean the beaches, and make it a more, uh, more, uh, you know, appealing place, a, a, a more of an appealing uh, uh, vacation destination. The Florida, uh, the Key West Sea Aquarium was built um, as, as a, you know, a beacon to draw visitors down, down to Key West. Um, so there was, um, there was, you know, a, a need to create this bridge system. Um, this is when the World War I veterans were brought down in 1934 to begin building the, the, this the system of, of solid bridges that would have kind of paralleled the, uh, uh, the overseas railroad, the overseas railroad. Of course, 1935, the Labor Day hurricane on September 2nd arrived and uh, wiped out all of those efforts killing you know, hundreds of people and set back the uh, construction, you know, ended construction. Um, but in 1938, um, or shortly after the hurricane, uh, it was decided that they wanted to, you know, to rebuild this, this railroad, or, or this highway to finish the, uh, the, the, the construction project. But there, there was a decision that had to be made because the hurricane had destroyed Henry Flagler's railroad. Um, <clears throat> And they they couldn't afford to rebuild the railroad and rebuild and, and build the, you know a, a solid bridge system to, for the overseas highway. So a decision had to be made, and it was, and it was decided that the highway would become the conduit that would connect <clears throat> the mainland to to Key West. And so the FEC, the FEC, the Florida East Coast uh, Railroad, uh, sold their right of way. To, to the county and the state um, for $640,000. And it was on these bridges that, because the bridges were really well made, the, the, these train bridges were, were extraordinarily well made and withstood, by and large, the hurricane. So what the, so during, you know, from 1936, 37, there, there were these bridge construction projects where they, they widened the uh, already standing railroad bridges to accommodate, to accommodate automobile traffic. And, so when the second bridge, uh, the second incarnation of the, of, of the Overseas Highway opens up in 1938, it is now a complete road. You can get in your car in, in Miami, drive all the way down to Key West without ever stopping, except for maybe petrol or, you know, for stretch your legs, you know, to get a bite to eat, to, you know, something to drink, to, to relax. But you didn't have to board an automobile ferry anymore. So it was a more, it was a continuous road and a much more reliable. Um, it was also, in order to pay for all these construction projects, it also become a toll road. I know the toll road now is, is again kind of coming back into play, um, but there, or the idea of a toll road for, for the Florida Keys. I know um, there were two toll booths uh, that were uh, situated, one at Lower Matacumbi Key, um, at, at the end kind of where, um, where the, uh, um, the ferry terminal had once been. Uh, there was a, the Toll Gate Inn, which was kind of a, a hotel that became kind of a notorious hotel, uh, was there, it was called the Toll Gate Inn. And then the second toll booth was at Big Pine Key, um, kind of where the Chamber of Commerce is today. And it wasn't really cheap. I mean, this is the 19, 1930s, 1940s, and it was a dollar for, the, for, the, you know, for every, every car, plus 25 cents for every passenger inside the car in order to, to travel on this road. It was a big improvement um, to the earlier version. It had eliminated that, you know, you know a, a lot of the uh, delays associated with, with the ferry system. And, um, and uh, it, it, this continued to be a toll road until about 1954 when the tolls were um, uh, ended and the toll booths kind of picked up and carted away. But there was a, before that time, there was a, a third incarnation of the Overseas Highway, and this is when it becomes to better resemble the road that we drive on today. Because the um, FEC had sold the right-of-way, um, what became known as the, uh, what has become known as the 18-mile stretch was incorporated into the railroad, or into, into the highway. And this, you know, this drastically shortened the, uh, the, the route, so you didn't have to go all the way through the Card Sound Road um, route, you know, up towards Ocean Reef and then, and, and then down. Now there was a more direct route, you know, from Florida City to, uh, to the Jewfish Creek Bridge, um, which was now no longer a swing bridge, but a, uh, it, it was a um, drawbridge. 
drawbridge. Uh, <laughs> um, and that, the bridge was built in 1930, uh, was finished in 1943, and this third incarnation of the highway uh, was opened in 1944. And this is the road that much more resembles um, the road we drive on today. Of course, it wasn't totally, you know, it wasn't totally the same. Uh, many of the bridges were, were similar, and the road had, had jumped from the, what's called the old highway in the Upper Keys, especially, um, and, and, and gone on to the, uh, the, the, the right-of-way, the, the, the railroad right-of-way. So actually, when you're driving um, through the Upper Keys, especially as you're driving on the southbound lane, that pretty much is, is where the old railroad tracks used to lay. Um, but um, in, in 1944, as this third incarnation opens, you still w was not the exact same uh, version is, is today, and that version still utilized the old Seven Mile Bridge, and also utilized um, uh, Bahia Honda State Park. There's the park road that goes through the park, and that was still the Overseas Highway, or State Road 4A, and that, was a, uh, that bridge project was a little different because you weren't able to, when they reconstructed the highway in 1938, they were, um, in the second version, they weren't able to widen the Bahia Honda Bridge. So what they did is they had to go over the top of the Bahia Honda Bridge, which is apparently a pretty, which was, was a pretty scary, I would imagine, uh, drive. You were 65 feet over the ocean. It was very narrow. I know like when, if two buses would pass by each other, those, um, those side view mirrors would off, often clink and fall off. Someone told me that at the Base of, at the base of the Bay Honda Bridge, someone opened a rearview mirror uh, shop, which is probably a, a pretty good cottage industry at the, at, at, in those days. But and it wasn't until the 1970s that 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 the Bay Honda Bridge uh, became obsolete as more than just a photographic icon, um, and and that new bridge, uh, uh, the new Bay Honda Bridge, was utilized. Uh, that was I think the late 70s, um, and then also the, the new Seven Mile Bridge. And that, you know, so now um, in the 70s and the 80s, now we're driving on pretty much the overseas highway that we've come to know today. And that is um, kind of a basic overview of, of the overseas highway. There were other, there were, the one big change, another big change um, with the, ninth, the third version of the overseas highway, and this was really helped because of, of the Navy down in, in Key West, um, because they needed to bring uh, water, more water down to Key West um, for, the, for military use, but also they need to reinforce the bridges in order to, uh, you know, to accommodate th th this heavy machinery coming down. So when the, um, this 1944 version of the highway is built, this is when the new and improved and, and, and enlarged water uh, pipe um, was also uh, uh, constructed, which brought you know, a, a better source of water down to Key West. And uh, so if you have any questions, uh, type them in now or type them in later and I will, I will, uh, I will get back to them. So those, those were the three primary uh, incarnations of the highway. There was a 1988, a 1928 version, the 1938 version, and the 1944 version, which began to shorten the road and, and, and have it become more what we know as today. Now we'll continue on these Tuesdays to explore these topics. Sometimes we'll be inside the museum. Sometimes we'll be outside at some historic location in the floor, you know, in, in the Upper Keys. Um, we'd love to be able to explore more of the keys. You know, I'd love to go down to, to No Name Key and, and, and Key West and, and, and Bahia Honda and other areas. But sadly, we are not able to, to, uh, to go that far. So we're going to be concentrating um, on, on, on locations here in the Upper Keys. Uh, so uh, we hope you uh, continue to uh, enjoy what we're doing here. Uh, it's always my pleasure to, to bring some more history to our community and to our visitors and, and, and to the people who, are, who, who see us on, on uh, Facebook who are unable to you know, visit the, the Florida Keys themselves. Be sure and visit our YouTube channel. It's really becoming um, a great source of, of information. We have more and more lectures and these presentations, um, as well as, as other materials, and it's really be always ex ever expanding, so we're, we're very proud of that. And I'll, we'll see you, I'll see you next Tuesday, and thanks again so much. You guys have a great week.